Hey, Brandon. How are you? I'm good, Devinder. How are you? Thanks for having me on. I'm good. So we are going to talk about SEO, which is obvious. But before we begin, why don't you give a quick introduction about your online life? Yeah. So um, I graduated college in 2006. I went to college to be a teacher, funny enough, um, because when I was in high school, people were like, you like school, you should keep doing school. Uh, So at 18, I got to Ithaca College and I sat down in the cafeteria. And uh, if you're old like me, you remember uh, you, when you used to choose your courses, they would literally give you like a course catalog. Yeah. It's like a big thick book of all it's, the courses you could take. It was so exciting. Decide yourself. <laughs> yep. And like uh, we, so I sat down and I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going to be an education major. And I went to college for that. And then I got out and I was very fortunate. Uh, I was able to find a job, not easily. Uh, nobody told me, everybody told me, Hey, we need teachers. Like the, the United States needs teachers and like you, you got to be a teacher and there's so many jobs. And then I graduated with a social studies teaching mm-hmm. degree and they were like, Ooh, not social studies though. We got too many of them. You should have been a science teacher, a special <laughs> education or math teacher. And I was like, what? Nobody told me. Um, it was so bad. So anyways, I did that for a couple of years and I taught and I was like, this is cool. I like the kids. I struggled to deal with the bureaucracy of it. I was getting really burned out. I didn't see much of a future for myself. So I started just kind of like looking for hobbies and doing different things. I was doing a lot of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at the time. And I started just a local web community website about Jiu Jitsu in Chicago where I live. Mm -hmm. And that even came from me just being involved in a bunch of forums and enough people ask you, where should I train Jiu Jitsu when I visit Chicago? that you're like, I guess this needs a website. So I built a little website, a free one on WordPress, mm-hmm. uh, like the uh, the free like .wordpress.com blog. Yep. And then eventually moved that over to like my own domain. And I'm like, all right, cool. Now I can use, I can get like email opt-ins and stuff. Started learning more and more about that. And then a couple of years go by. Uh, I've moved from just having a local community website to a review, like an apparel review website. Mm-hmm. I was moving so much apparel for my affiliates that I was like, I should just start my own company. So I started my <laughs> own company, um, importing and exporting from China and Japan and Pakistan, because that's where all of the um, manufacturing, you know, where everything gets made. Like we don't have the infrastructure to make jujitsu geese in the United States anymore. Um, which is fine. I know friends who have tried to make them in the United States and they're awful. They're awful. <laughs> like we're, like whoever's here to make them, it's just not good. And my factory in Pakistan made these just amazing garments. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's figured out importing and exporting. Um, I was a, I became a principal for a little bit. Um, and I say for a little bit because becoming a principal immediately was like, we had our first kid. I was drowning in my business. Um, I was drowning in my career. I didn't see any hope for the future. I was literally having panic attacks on Sunday night before I had to go back to work on Monday. And I was like, you know, I developed like a real unhealthy relationship with alcohol. And I was like, this, this can't be the life. This cannot be what the universe has, you know, what God has for me here. Mm -hmm. And I I decided like I had to figure it out. So I took a step back uh, in my career and I went from being a principal back to being a teacher. Uh, Eventually ended up selling the whole jujitsu company, the apparel company, the review website, Mm -hmm. everything. And one of my friends, Jason Zook, who runs a website called Wandering Aimfully told me like, hey man, why don't you just um, take on clients? Just take on SEO clients, you're good at it. So I did that and I got really good at it. Um, And then I was like, all right, I guess I need to build my own agency, right? Mm -hmm. I was very inspired by Gary Vaynerchuk. Like, I'm just going to start my own agency. Because like, (laughs) you know, he did, instead of like, as much as he's a guru, look, I- Just don't don't talk like him, that's that's okay. (laughs) I have very strong feelings about Gary Vaynerchuk uh, as an entrepreneur and as a person based on my personal interactions with him. Uh But I was still inspired by the fact that he chose, instead of being like, I'm going to become some sort of guru, he's like, I'm going to start an agency. And he did. And I still respect the heck out of that. VaynerMedia is a successful agency. And that's hard. So I was like, all right, the path is teacher to agency. And that's, that's the path. And then all of a sudden, I was like, I don't know. That scared the heck out of me. I, at this point, now have two kids. I have three now. But at this point in the story, I have two kids, um, a wife. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do insurance. And I don't know if I want to do that. And again, here comes Jason Zook being like, hey, man, why don't you just get a job at an agency? Yeah. Like there's a there's steps between your own business and like being a teacher. 
So why don't you just stair step your way up to that? And I was like, oh, that's dumb. Why didn't I think of that? So I started, I just, uh, I was very fortunate. I applied for a couple of positions, was able to choose to become the SEO director at Click Studios, which is an amazing agency that I love working at here in Chicago. And now I do that full time, but I'm, they also see the importance of me doing things like this and doing education and putting more of what I believe and what Click believes out into the world around SEO. Yeah, and I can definitely relate your journey to mine because I also studied college in MBA finance and what I do now, PHP, CSH, web design is nothing related to finance. It's yep. just you go in college, you get the degree and then you figure out, hey, what what should I do? We all so silly. Yeah, yeah, but but I guess our society, you know, the way your parents guide you because actually no one can guide you by the time you discover what you want to do you have already done your degree and all that thing so mm-hmm. so, yeah. let's, so let's dive deep into seo and relationships now i'm going to quote mm-hmm. you here which is i think breaking down the myths around seo and helping people understand that the future of seo is all about relationship is what i want to change now can you explain about relationships here in the context of seo Yeah. So there's a bunch of myths around SEO, but I think one of the biggest ones is that it's anything, but they, it's anything but human to human interaction. And what I mean by that is behind every website is a person or people running Mm -hmm. it. And if you simply build a relationship with those people and you connect on a human level, all of a sudden it makes sense for your websites to connect. Um, I did a bunch of, so primarily the way you get rankings in Google uh, is by having really good content and an amazing website, yes, but also by getting links to that website. And that's what I'm talking about with the relationships here. Uh, I did some backlink analysis on a couple people's websites. And what I found very unsurprisingly is that when I see who they link to the most, it's literally a Rolodex of their friends. These are people who've been on their podcast. These are people that they recommend people who they just personally hang out with in off hours. Um, And it was just a who's who of their like friendships over the years. And you could see that some like they might not be friends with them anymore, but those links are still there from a time when they were friends. And I think that's the key when we talk about SEO. And if you want to be successful, it's really about like, having the relationships with people to like make great stuff. I believe that a lot of really great content doesn't just come from one person. I don't just go into my cave and type out this masterpiece and then just emerge to the world. Hello, I've created this masterpiece. Everybody look at it. Like that's not how I make my best stuff. I make my best stuff doing what we're doing right now. And I make my best stuff by tweeting all my friends and being like, Hey, I'm writing about this. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Um, And that's where like some of my best work has come from. And I think like very transparently that like the more that we're able to do that, the more we're able to build those relationships, the links come. And if they're not coming, you have friendships now where you can ask somebody, Hey, can I, can I write for your website? And they're like, dude, I've been waiting for you to ask. (laughs) Like we've been friends for years. I was nervous to ask you to write for me because I failed, figured, you know, you're so busy and you got all this stuff going on. You're like, Oh my God, no way. I've been waiting to ask too. Um, like that's how that works versus um, there, feeling like it's this like sorcery or spammy kind of thing. Yeah. And are there any steps or methodology to build these relationships vis-a-vis, you know, we build normal relationship, but here we are building relationship with keeping SEO in mind, like links and all that. Yeah, I think, so I think like you have to consider who you're building a relationship with, yeah. right? Um, am I building, I always, there's this really cool concept, uh, that was popularized and I guess created by a guy named Chet Holmes, uh, Chet Holmes, oh, I'm going to butcher it. It's either like, it's like ultimate sales machine or ultimate selling machine, uh, is Chet's book. And I found out about the dream 100 through Russell Brunson and Noah Kagan and, uh, another guy named Glenn Alsip who runs a website called detailed.com. Uh, mm-hmm. who's like an OG in the SEO space. Glenn's awesome. He has a website most people know him from called Viper Chill. And um, I, the, I just saw like 10 times the Dream 100 kept coming into my ecosystem. And I was like, okay, I got to pay attention to this. And really, it's just this idea of like, instead of trying to get, like, let's really ground this in SEO, instead of trying to get all of the links 
I want all the links. I want 10,000 websites to link to me. Maybe, <laughs> but what if you just got the hundred that matter the most? Yeah. And what if you broke down that? One. And the yeah. most valuable one, yeah. Yep. And when we talk about getting links for SEO, we're not talking about just the biggest authority. I'm not talking about, all right, let me get a link from, you know, Huffington Post and the New York Times and all of this stuff, like not just like high authority, but more so high relevancy. So like authority matters, right? Like who's the most authoritative, but also like who's the most authoritative in your ecosystem, yeah. right? That's where it's really going to matter. Yeah, um, but- and then the second question becomes like, do they link to people? Like, is this somebody who's going to have a reciprocal relationship with you? Mm-hmm. Um, and even then, like, even if they don't, y'all can still be friends. Yeah. Like, the, I've met most of my friends through other friends, right? That's how you make new, it's awkward to make friends as an adult. So most of the time you make friends through your other friends, yeah. through knowing people. So even if there's no like SEO benefit, I just feel like the larger your network is and the more people that you know, you have in your ecosystem, um, not for the purpose of SEO. Again, like the SEO stuff will happen when you just make friends with people. Yeah, because here also we are doing the same thing. Now I'm interviewing you you, and I'm going to post about you with your website link on my website. So my first contact with you is as a person, not as a consumer of your content on your website. And Mm -hmm. this would result in a link back and the SEO engine will start, right? (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like the, and just like super transparently, like, I'm not going to be like, Hey, can you give me that? Can you give me that? Like we're talking to each other in the alley. Like, can you give me one of those links, man? You got any links? I need those links. Like it's not some sketchy thing, but I, I know that like general practice is that like, if you, uh, you know, if I come in here and give like a banger interview and it's real good, um, there's a good chance. Like most people put links in their stuff yeah. and like, but it's not, I'm not doing this because like, I really hope I get a link. Like, I just know this stuff matters. Um, and I know that somebody will see this interview, right? And they'll mm-hmm. see this interview. And then down the road, they'll be like, oh, that was that Brendan guy. So I'm writing an article and I want to link to something about this. Let me see if Brendan's ever talked about that. So they'll Google like Brendan SEO um, trophy keywords or something. And they're like, oh, he wrote this really cool article on trophy keywords. I'll link to that. Like that's how that works. Um, and you can be more direct, right? Don't get me wrong. I do client work right? I have clients and I don't, I don't sell my clients on this like woo woo, like let's all just be friends. Like there's, <laughs> I use automation, I yeah. use outreach tools. I do all of that stuff, but I've found it in a way I talked to um, this guy named Samo from Hrefs and he does their video and stuff there. But I talked to him and I said like, Hey, I want to use outreach tools, but I feel like they're kind of spammy. He's like, well, do you send spammy email now? And I said, no. And he was like, so why would you use the tool to be spammy? And I was like, oh, you're right. Like I, I had this like limiting belief, like only right. spammers use outreach, outreach tools. Is it like cold emailing? Yep. Okay. Yep. A lot of cold outreach, uh, cold email outreach. Now, if I sent you an email, a cold email that was like, hey, what's up? My name is Brendan. Uh, you know, you got, I bet you get these emails, right? You get the... Uh, backlinko kind of like template of like, Hey, just checking. I was browsing the web for content about this and found your website. Great stuff. God, if you say great stuff in an email and a cold email to me, I know exactly what template you're using. (laughs) Um, But then it's like, Hey, check out my infographic. And I think it would be great if you link to me on this page. Like if that's our first introduction, I know right away, our relationship is transactional. I give you this, you give me that, and that is it. We are buying and selling from each other. We are not friends, right? You're a shady drug dealer. Like, that's who you are to me. Versus, if you, what if I sent you an email, and it might, it's automation, but I just said, hey, Devinder, I noticed you had a resources page on your website. Are you open to new uh, recommendations for your resource page? Yeah. And I, I, do, I do get those kind of emails and those are like natural emails and I do include those resources because I have a bunch maybe, of websites. And maybe not. Maybe you're like, no, like I don't know you. Or maybe you're like, yeah, send, it, send over some resources. And if there's something in there that, and what I do is I'll also send like other resources. I'll just be a normal person. Because here's the thing. Here's what I think the direction Google's going. For a long time, the idea with SEO was you get one link from one website and any links you get after that kind of like decrease in strength, right? The yeah. first link you get or, you know, getting that first link matters a lot. It'll move the needle a lot, but afterwards it's a little more incremental. Here's what I think is going to change. 
is that Google is going to start seeing like not just how many links you have from a website, but the cadence of those links. Mm -hmm. So I want to see that I got a link in 2017. And then in 2018, I got a link in 2019. I got a link. They want to see, are they still friends? And they're going to start counting stuff like that. Now, granted, uh, Google doesn't know how their algorithm works. They've actually hired people. They've come out and just said like, we know what we put in the algorithm, but we don't really understand why it's like literally rank brain. They're like, we don't really understand what's happening here. Mm -hmm. um, so they're still figuring that out. But my point is that like, they want to see me and you link to each other this year. And then in a couple months, another link, and then maybe I link to you and then maybe you link to me. And what it does is, is they can literally see the web of our friendship and our relationships. So when you start out transactional, a transactional cold email will never become a friendship. We will never become friends because I know what you want right away. I know that you see me as a link opportunity yeah, versus a human. A lot of people say that let's do cold email outreach, but I always put cold email outreach as a spammy activity. I never consider it as a white hat because I really don't understand with you are emailing someone who don't, you don't know and with a slapping a template over it. And guess what? I also receive emails like, hey, can you give me a link and make sure it's not no follow link? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> can you can we can I get a do follow link? Yeah, get a middle finger. Like I don't know you, you, you. Like you just asked. Now you're really getting into it. Now you're getting into the fact that you know. Ugh. Yeah. No. Those. But the thing is, like, here's the thing: is just because people do stuff bad, does that mean it's kind of like? I guess here's the another example. It's just like um, if you've ever like. Uh, I got blessed that I met my wife when I was in college mm -hmm. and uh, we've been married for 10 years. We have these three wonderful children and everything. So I've never had to date as an adult. God willing, I never will. And like the, <laughs> but if you did have to date as an adult or are watching this and currently dating as an adult, you've probably just walked up to people and introduced to yourself to them before. Yeah. Now, because, and I'm going to do this from a, like a, a male to female perspective. Am I going to be held back? Well, I don't talk to women at bars because this jerk over here talks to women and acts like a total scumbag. So now I can't talk to women at bars. No, that sounds insane. Just because somebody does something badly doesn't mean, that's like saying like, I don't do Facebook ads because I've seen it because Ty Lopez is doing them in like a total scumbag, right? Like <laughs> just because somebody uses a tool in a scammy way or a spammy way doesn't mean that it's not a way you can do honest outreach with. And I'm really excited. Like we use Pitchbox and I'm excited. We've been using it for a little bit. I'm excited at the results of like just sending very human, very personalized emails. What I like about Pitchbox is that it acts as like a CRM where I can see open rates. I can see reply rates. I can see all this stuff. And I can see for me at an agency level, I can see my team. I can see what they're doing and we can optimize internally mm -hmm. for like, Hey, if I'm sending this great personalized email, not from a, I mean, yes, there's a template, but it's a hundred percent personalized, not like personalized is like put their name at the top. That's not personalization. That's just using form field, like field fills. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, personalization is like in Pitchbox, you can see their website. I can literally browse your website in Pitchbox and I can look at your about page. I can look at your social media and I can be like, Oh, that's crazy. They grew up in Binghamton, New York. I grew up in Binghamton, New York. And then I put that in the email and I reach out like a person. Um, I think you can use tools in a spammy way, but I also think you can use it in a genuine way. It's harder uh, to do it my way, but I think it lasts. Yeah. Now this is all about relationship building with a person to person. How about you reaching out to a company or a product entity? Is there a, is there a difference in methodology while reaching to them? Yeah, hundred percent as a person. I'm trying to get somebody's email address who is an actual person that works there. Mm -hmm. And I'm reaching out like, Hey, Sherry, Hey, Rick, um, you know, Hey, Juan, I'm just trying to say what's up. Uh, and then whatever, whatever reason I'm reaching out to them. You and know what I mean? What about direct relationship building with consumers of your content via like email list building, Facebook groups, enrollments in your courses. Now does this in any way trickle down, you know, trickle down effect on the SEO value of your publicly available content? Like they result in certain link bags or more sharing of your content? Oh, of course. Like look at all the links that Brian Dean gets from Backlinko and people don't even read his stuff. I have people that share, I see people that share his stuff and I'm like, hey, 
this is actually like a ripoff article of this other article or Neil Patel is probably a better example. <laughs> they share, they share something from Neil Patel and I'm like, you, did you know the screenshots in this article are actually this other guy's Google analytics? He copied the guy. He didn't even use his own screenshots. He used the other guy's screenshots. And they were like, Oh, you know, to be honest, I didn't really read it very closely. I just skimmed it and it looked helpful. So I thought I would share it. This happened to me. Yes. Yesterday. This is I called, I shared it's a, called ego bait. It's called yeah. ego bait. And it's I like, sh- I shared a link yeah. of Neil Patel's article with someone and that person replied, I know he didn't write this one, so you can pass. Uh, nothing against him. It's just what people, you know, oh. have this general, you know. Perspective. I have a strong, I have a strong, uh, most, like, look, look, I'm I'm self-aware enough to know that my strongly held opi- uh, opinions are mostly stupid and silly. <laughs> and I'll probably disagree. You know, like, for years, I disliked Russell Brunson. And I love him now. I am such a Russell Brunson fan. It's out of, I'm like, number one fanboy. Love it. And like, the thing is like, I'm totally like, look, like I'm, I'm, I, I have depths, right. And I, I'm a deep person. I have all of these like orders of magnitude and like, I'm complicated and that's okay. We all are, but I have a problem with anybody who claims to be a digital marketing guru and has never had a successful project outside their blog where they say they're a digital marketing guru. Neil Patel has tried, and I know it's like shot pew pew shots fired, but like, <laughs> he tr- he's tried to start other projects. He had this thing called the million dollar blog project mm-hmm. and he failed miserably and spectacularly. And you can't tell me same thing. The reason I harp on backlinko, like you can't tell me you're an SEO expert where the only SEO success you've ever had is on your SEO expert blog. It's not the same thing ranking. Yeah. And he'll, they'll say things like, well, I rank number one for backlinks and that must because logically it makes sense, right? It must be the hardest term to rank for because you're getting backlinks to rank for backlinks and that, that's a hard thing, but they're wrong. They've never tried to rank for like pharmaceuticals, uh, legal services. Like they've never tried to rank for these actually extremely competitive terms. Yeah. And they're claiming like, well, I'm, I'm working, SEO is the hardest thing to rank for. It's actually the easiest because you're reaching out to other SEO blogs for links and they get the game. They're like, oh, cool. I'm happy to give you a link. Will you give me a link? Yeah, cool. Versus if you reach, am I going to reach out to another legal firm and be <laughs> like, hey, can you guys, can you guys give me a link? Like that's, th- the game is totally different outside of our own little SEO bubble. And what a lot of people don't realize is that like there are a lot, like the gurus really ask yourself this, like, are, you know, there's an article on Backlinko called, literally, it's called Learn SEO Fast. And I crawled it with uh, Screaming Frog, which is a like web crawling tool. Yeah. On the Learn SEO Fast article, that it's not actually an article, it's links to other yeah. SEO guides. I've seen there that. There are article. a thousand links in that page. Devinder, do you think if I sent you a thousand links in an email, do you think you'd be able to learn SEO fast? Nope. It would be total slow. It would be, it's more confusing than it is helpful. But so then ask yourself, why, why did he make that article? Why does he have a page with a thousand links on it? To get backlinks. Yep. Simple. It's not, his game is not to help people. It's to rank really good. So people join his email list. So once a year, he sends the same emails every year. If you're on his list, you saw the same emails in 2017 and 2018. He'll change one or two words. Like whatever the, he'll be like, you might've seen the latest Google update called. And then he changes that one word and it's just, it's, it's disingenuous and it causes more confusion than it does help people. And I'm a teacher, right? I'm here to educate people. I'm here to help you understand that like the thing that might be standing in the way of your business and living the life that you want is building a website that is like an automated pipeline of like traffic, right? Where you don't have to post on Facebook every day. You don't have to do 10,000 Pinterest pins people just find your website and opt in for your email list and buy your products and hire you for your services. That's what I want people to understand of what search can be. But then I got these other people out here that are overcomplicating it on purpose so they can sell thousand dollar courses. Like I'm not into it. That's not my jam. Um, My heart is really in teaching and helping people and doing interviews like this because like I want to reach as many people as possible. Yeah. To be honest, links are 
not that hard if you produce quality content and you can surround mm-hmm. yourself with people who actually are producing content rather than just talking about content i have mm-hmm. bunch of niche websites and i to be honest i don't even track how many backlinks they get but the content gets ranked high because the tag the content is highly niche focused and people who want that content access it and they share it so mm-hmm. i guess you got to find your tribe that the tribe that you're talking about is like they are just building their seo bubble and they're selling seo services by pretending that we are making seo stuff on websites which actually they are not working on actual client websites you know getting right. the links for the okay now let's talk about the content types d- diversification like earlier we only had like textual content and few images but now we have audio video now has this made the whole seo game more complicated So I think um a couple things. I think we're we're not super far off from there being like search engines for audio. Um mm-hmm. the problem is it'll be it'll still be a uh a text search engine, right? The way that they're going to probably do it is by auto generating transcripts and then yeah. searching the transcripts for relative stuff. Um so I don't think audio really muddies it. Uh I think video does. I think whenever you're building content, you have to ask yourself like is is the thing that i'm teaching here best served with video or with writing and sometimes it is writing and sometimes it's video and sometimes it's both but the the number one way to see like how people want their problems solved is to simply google it yeah <laughs> if i google how to something does articles come up does books come up does videos come up but like what is this you know whatever I like to interrupt you here like now if you google a few keywords there's a second biggest search engine in the world which is youtube now so the complexity has gone up now if i'm writing an article like how to get backlinks now i'm writing an article in form of text and second person is just making a video on it there are chances his video might rank higher than me even though i have a backlinks because both even though both are like google's babies but i've seen the tendency of youtube videos getting ranked higher and even the newer ones are getting ranked higher rather than the old ones so the 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 video game has co- you know little there's what complete, i love about yeah? sorry i what i love about video is just it's on youtube is they own the whole ecosystem so they own the whole platform versus yeah. once google sends somebody to you they know if they bounce back to google but they don't really know how people are doing on your website. Um they might be able to pull from Google Analytics and get a general sense, but I don't I don't feel like your Google like if you choose to use Google Analytics, I don't feel like that's a ranking factor at mm-hmm. all. Um but with YouTube, the way that videos rise to the top is by clicks. So do you have a good title? Do you have a good thumbnail? And then watch time. It's so democratic. Yeah. If you have a video that has 100% watch time, they're going to show that to more people and more people and more people and more people and then it's watch time did you watch the whole thing and then did you stay on the platform and watch another video from that creator and mm-hmm. if not that creator did you watch a video from another creator are your videos good enough to keep people on youtube to get people to watch them and keep them on youtube and i love the democracy of that i love that like unlike the the seo the google seo game the youtube seo game is like you just got to make the best stuff like we say it in google but the, i don't know the last time you did a google search but i i googled something this morning and i was not impressed with the results like <laughs> they they're probably the best out there but the best out there was just not very good versus on youtube like you're probably going to find a really good uh video that ed- educates you inspires you entertains you like does all of those things that it's supposed to Yeah because video besides video there's audio now we are recording this over video now this will go to youtube audio will go to itunes and the whole thing will also be published as text though the text would only include the you know questions that we are discussing not the answers for answer you need to watch the video or consume the audio so i am doing like three stages so i'm not sure which would perform better because I think every content type has its own audience like a person because mm-hmm. and there's a trickle down effect and I was surprised like a lot of people has jo- have joined my Facebook group which is web creators community and I asked them like how did you come to know about because th- those were like new faces which I have not seen in others group and they said I listened to your podcast and you mentioned in your podcast that there's a group so I just came through it and I said like, wow that's interesting Mhm yeah absolutely I think that So I have a project coming up that I'm starting in a few weeks called 100 Days of SEO where mm-hmm. for 100 weekdays so 20 weeks 
Mm -hmm. um, five months, I am going to create a blog post, a podcast episode, and a video every single day about some sort of SEO topic. So there'll be interviews mixed in, um, but I'm going to publish all three of those every single weekday for five months, um, which is my pushback against the, like, I don't want to solve when I, I don't want to come on your podcast and like try to cool guy everybody and act like, uh, Oh, I'm talking trash about Neil Patel or something. Like I actually, I'm a teacher. I do stuff about it, right? Like I'm going to, I'm going to beat them with education by putting mm -hmm. out better education. And I think that that's pretty hard to ignore when there's a hundred podcast episodes, a hundred good blog posts and a hundred videos out now. Um, but yeah, for very much a similar reason of like people want to consume people who listen to lots of podcasts might not be big on YouTube and people who want to read articles might not be, they might not want to listen to the podcast episode. So I think that, yeah, you absolutely have to meet people where they are. Now, does everything need to be repurposed three ways? Like, no, like hone your skill. I've, I've had success on YouTube. I have an existing channel with about 500 subscribers and some of the videos have a pretty absurd amount of views because um, I've figured out the algorithm a little bit, right? Like I have good organic SEO success. I've had a podcast for a couple of years that did really well. Mm -hmm. um, I figured them all out individually and now I can put them all together. And besides the audio video thing, the other thing that's which is fading up is the long form content. Now, traditionally, long form content was considered as a gold mine from SEO point of view. Now people have less patience, less time to read because of, you know, video and audio things. Like if I have something available as an audio or video, I'll prefer to do consume that rather than text. So is writing long form content still the golden practice or is it on the downhill? Yes, good question. Um, so I think, uh, you know, you've heard a lot that this idea of like we have an attention span equal to a goldfish and it's only <laughs> like four seconds long. Yeah. What they don't tell you on there is that the, those statistics are based on advertising. Yeah. Not actual content. content. So like when they say like, oh, you only have four seconds to hook somebody. Yeah, with an ad because we hate ads. I have a five-year-old who does not know what a television commercial is. Mm -hmm. He has no, he has only in his young life watched Netflix and Amazon prime and whatever else. We went to somebody's house the other day and they had cable television on and a commercial came on and he was like, TV's broke dad. The TV is <laughs> broken. The show's off. We don't, I don't, it's off. Why is it off? I'm like, nobody is a commercial. And he's like, but why isn't my show still on? And I'm like, Oh buddy, you don't know what we have a whole generation of kids coming up who have no idea what a commercial is. And that means a lot to me. Cause like the thing is like commercials suck. They're usually pretty bad and people don't have a decreased attention span. It's just much more democratic now. So as far as like long form content, it just has to be good. Like, I don't know the last time you read a really good book, but I've had a couple books recently that I have blown through in like two days. Mm -hmm. I read the whole book in a day or two because they were really good. Okay. Like we have the attention span to read a crazy amount. It's just, if you're going to write a 6,000 word article, it has to be really good. Yeah. Let's take an example, like hypothetical example. Like you have a 5,000 words article with say four section. That's one part of it. And the other part, you divide those four sections into four different blog posts. Now, what, according to you, just thinking from a hypothetical point of view, would Google love that 5,000 words, one article or mm. separate four articles that are like subsections taken out from that article? So here's the key. I'm going to give you like the SEO uh, golden ticket right now. The key here is not, should it be broken up uh, based on like what's best for Google? Like mm -hmm. is, it five, is it better, let's use even numbers. So is it better to have a 4,000 word article or four 1,000 word articles? Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the wrong question. Mm -hmm. The right question is what is the search intent around each of those pieces? So does a 4,000, if, if I'm Googling something, is it best for me to search, like have that like one long form pillar post mm -hmm. or to break it out into four sections? Is it going to solve the search intent accurately? And the, the best way to do it is just to see what's ranking now. So if I Google something, is it a bunch of 4,000 word articles that include all the four things or is it more specific? And the answer could be both. Right. Um, there's this idea of like pillar and cluster content where I have this big pillar post in the middle. Maybe it's about like 
productivity. And it's just this epic guide to productivity and getting things done. And then maybe I have like a productivity and morning routines article and then a productivity and a Pomodoro technique article. And then I have all this cluster content kind of built around it and they all link to each other. They all interlink with each other. But the question really is like, it's not, it, it's very much, it depends in case to case because I have to know what the specific search is and what the topic is. And then I have to try to reverse engineer what their intent is uh, in searching that thing. And is my content going to solve that better with one big post or four separate posts? Okay. So we went from 4,000 words to 1,000 words, separate article. Let's go down further now. Uh, like, a uh, hundred or two hundred words post where like we have a lot of directory listing tools kind of a sites where mm -hmm. you just have one image, one name of the tool, and then there's like hundred fifty words of description. Now, is that kind of a content an SEO disaster or Google still loves it? Oh, I mean, if you look at like big websites like uh, I feel like Captera and G Two Crowd, like they have a, they have thousands of pages that are just like brief product descriptions of. Yeah whatever Zapier uh, has a, has a separate page for each of their integrations that are all very small. They're not built out, but they rank really well because they're on a really authoritative website. Mm -hmm. um, and that matters too. It's not just like, is it, I don't know. I think like the, the answer is really like how quick can you solve the problem? Like, look, like I can write a really pithy 75 word blog post, right? Like, uh, I, I have an article on Medium. It's one of the few that I still keep there because I feel like Medium's a black hole. I don't feel like any human should ever waste their time on Medium because Medium doesn't promote your stuff for you at all. I saw your video um, on Medium. Yeah, I have strong feelings. Uh, if you can get into one of the big publications on Medium, do it because now you're not on Medium, you're in a publication. Um, but regardless, I have an article uh, on Medium that's something to the effect of like uh, how to get everything you ever wanted in life. Mm -hmm. And when you read the article, it's literally step one, stop reading articles like this. <laughs> step two, stop writing articles like this. That's a whole article. I think it's genius. I think it's very funny. That's not going to rank for anything. Yeah, it gets to the point and it makes it it's funny. But like that's a social media post. That's a, it's a, that's a meme. That's not an yeah. article. It doesn't actually solve their problem. So it depends. Like, are you actually solving the problem in 200 words? Like whatever, whatever you think a human is searching for. Uh, do you adequately and thoroughly solve it in the, in that amount of words? And if yes, then it probably has a chance to rank. And if it's too thin, then probably not. Yeah, because besides, you know, these two listing based 100, 200 articles, there's another type of content, which is like weekly roundup post, which happens mm -hmm. on specific website. Like I do myself two of them on two websites. And even though it's, uh, I would, if, if I could take it, like if I, compare it with the typical SEO fundamentals. Obviously it's an SEO disaster because it's like 200 words with 15 different links to different websites. Mm -hmm. It's like super thin content with so much, you know, but it's, I'm just talking from a technical point of view, but the links that are happening are not actually going to a spam website. They're mostly for authoritative websites that are actually related to the content you produce. So I guess mm -hmm. that works, right? Yeah, I mean, those, you're probably not going to rank a, a page of like just links. Link roundup posts are not going to really rank for anything. But is your goal with creating that content to kind of like we talked about the Learn SEO Fast article. The goal with that article is not to actually help people. It's to get links. Yeah. Well, your goal with the link roundups is not to get links and to rank it. It's to help people, which builds relationships. And all yeah. of a sudden, Google sees these. I don't think you can really increase your rankings by linking out to people, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, it is a factor, uh, but I think it's buried way deep. Otherwise you could just spam the heck out of it by putting a million links to other websites on our site. But my point is that like it sees, it helps Google better see that relationship. Oh, there's a relationship between this website and this website. And there's, Oh, they've linked to all of these. Cool. And there's also a chance for you to like reach out to those people and be like, Hey, I included you in the link roundup and just, be friends with them and be a normal human. And I know I keep talking about this, but like that's the long game of this where like eventually five or 10 or 20 of your friends become these super, you know, they become Seth Godin and Tim Ferriss. And all of a sudden you have links on these huge websites and even better, even better than the links, you're friends with Seth Godin and Tim Ferriss. Yeah. Which it's just, I mean, like, what do you really want out of life? Like the links, the links in the SEO are a means to an end, right? Yeah. It, and like, it, 
there's other ways to get that. I guess my point is when you have good relationships with people, you also get that same means to that same end. Yeah, I'm, I've had, for me, it has been a magic formula, to be honest. It may not have sent me tons of traffic via Google, but it has helped me build relationships and ultimately serve my end user purpose of getting people on email list and getting, you know, in my Facebook mm-hmm. group and other things, getting into courses, etc. So <laughs> the purpose is served now. It depends now. Everything that you produce is not for Google, right? It's basically for humans and humans are also there in, on social media and, you know, other platforms. So talking mm-hmm. about social media, how important is the posting of your content on social media with regard to SEO in mind? Because when you Google search a few keywords, I've seen earlier, you would see Facebook page post appearing in Google search, which I don't mm-hmm. see now, but I still see pin interest post appearing in search results. Is that the phenomena one should be worried about or should take into account? I'm- so I think that there's a, I, so here's what I think. This is my secret theory. Uh, not so secret now that I'm telling you and everybody else. <laughs> the number one growth engine for Pinterest is Google. Uh-huh. If you forced people to come to your website and log in before they were allowed to look at your content, would Google rank that content? Nope. No. Why did they do it for Pinterest? Pinterest, you have to, if you're logged out and you don't have a Pinterest account, you can get to the page and you can see the first couple pins, but then you scroll down a little bit and it's like, hey, 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 log in, make an account. Why is Google being the free growth engine of this billion dollar company? Here's my theory. We will see Google buy Pinterest. Google will buy it because they own their traffic. All they have to do is go, oh, you don't, you don't want to sell to us? and just turn that faucet off and all of a sudden Pinterest dies because nobody, there's nobody organically finding pin boards unless you're already on Pinterest looking for it. You would have to go to Pinterest to find the pins, not just I'm looking for gardening tips and Pinterest comes up, right? Um, I think that the idea of trying to rank your Pinterest boards is a very, like from an SEO standpoint, when I see that there's Pinterest stuff ranking, I'm like gold mine. This is a really easy thing to rank for. Google doesn't want to rank Pinterest stuff in there. It's doing it because it's just trying to fill in the gaps. That's why you never Google something and it's like, there are 27 results, right? Like every single one is like 28.6 billion results in 0.25 seconds. Like they, they love showing that they have all of the results and they've crawled the whole internet, all of these things. So like, yeah, I don't, as far as like, does social posting influence SEO? No, not at all. Um, there's ways that you can do what's called like uh, parasite SEO and barnacle SEO, meaning like if I try to rank content not on my website, meaning I'm, I'm, I've got a guest post somewhere else or I've got a thing on a medium publication, I'm going to then put a bunch of links to that and build links to that. So that will maybe my article ranks one and then maybe my guest post on another website ranks number two. And now you own instead of 25 to 30% of the clicks, now I own 50% of the clicks. Things like that um, can be valuable, but not with uh, social media. I would not recommend anybody pursue like more. I do SEO because I got out of the social media hamster wheel. Like I have mm-hmm. no interest in it. Um, I don't, I tend to spout off a lot about how Facebook is this really nefarious company, but Google is equally nefarious. They're the yeah. worst. Like they put microphones in everybody's friggin' thermometers and didn't tell anybody. And they're like, oh, it was supposed to be in the manual. We forgot. Like, what? You guys are, <laughs> that's so sketchy. So I don't know. I don't, again, with my like uh, high morals about nonsense stuff. But yeah, don't, don't worry about, it. I mean, pure, look, like social matters. It is a brilliant traffic technique. Kind of like people, somebody asked me literally yesterday, what about posting on Quora? Should I post on Quora? Does that help SEO? No because there are no follow links. They don't count for anything in the eyes of Google. However, you can get a ton of traffic from Quora just by, like, does that mean you shouldn't use it for traffic? No, but if we're talking in this very narrow scope of SEO, it's not worth your time. Okay, let's talk about the changes in SEO industry and the future henceforth like earlier we had a lot of black hat activity link farms you remember <laughs> oh i did i was i was into that man i was in deep with that i i had the i had the backlink genie 
I had Backlink Genie, an article marketing robot. I had Ezine articles. I was putting about a bunch of articles on ezinearticles.com. Uh, so many that they sent me a mug. Um, <laughs> I was doing Build My Rank. I was doing the best spinner. If you remember article spinning. Uh, automatic I, article spinning. Yeah, I, I all know. of them. I was doing all those things. And then Google was like, and just like, yeah, Panda and Penguin. destroyed me. Yeah, Panda and Penguin update like a lot of sites. Uh, yeah. Even my, yep. I used to be a blogger at that time. My, I used to be a technology blogger and I used to make most of my money via Google AdSense ads and Panda Penguin killed like 50% of it within two yep. months. But, but that was a good cleanup process because to be honest, at that time, SEO was mostly considered as a shady activity or black hat activity. No one, now you see people calling SEO as they will specifically say white hat SEO or white mm -hmm. SEO. Earlier, there was no white or black because everyone assumed it was black. It was all that. Yeah. 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 And look at me now. Like now I'm this weird like SEO hippie <laughs> and I just like, yeah, I'm all about, let's just be friends with each other, bro. Yeah. Right. So. so that's what I'm going to focus. Like we've checked earlier. It was assumed it's like black, black, you know, or I should say gray area. The SEO is all about being gray, but now you're focusing and saying that we should build relationship and get natural links. Besides that, any other way to, you know, build your link profile or get into oh, better. SEO yeah. Yeah. Account? Of course. Um, and look like here, I'm going to say this, uh, just to be really honest, like, a lot of people say they they do only white hat SEO because they want an excuse as to why their stuff sucks. Like they want an excuse to be like, well, you know, the reason we don't do really well in SEO is because we only do the white hat stuff. We don't lower ourselves to do anything spammy. And it's like, no, you're actually not even doing white hat SEO right. And you're just, you're, you've boxed yourself in. So you have an excuse not to succeed. Mm -hmm. Right. Kind of like those people that are like, oh, well, you know, if I worked out more, I bet I could look like that, too. And it's like you have no idea how much effort that person puts into their diet and their training to look like that. Yeah. And you want to like have, well, you know, I just don't have time, bro, but I could totally do that. No, you couldn't. Well, I'm, I could totally get all the rankings and tons of traffic and be super successful. But I'm I'm only a white hat SEO. So, no, like that's not how it works. You can use anything white hat. You can do anything white hat. There's ways to be upfront and honest with people and make sure that everybody's, everything's above board. Um, like I said, like the most of what we do for our clients and even for myself, like I do a lot of, it ends up looking like a lot of like outreach to people who have resource pages or link roundups. That's probably why you get a lot of outreach because people are looking for link roundups. And like that's, you have a page on your website that exists to link to people. It's insane to be like, well, how dare you reach out to me? Well, you've proven you like linking to people. And if I have something I think is pretty dope, like maybe you want to link to it. I don't know. Um, and if you don't, like no hard feelings. I'm not going to send you 50 follow-up emails. Like those are the worst. That's where it gets bad. But my point is that like, you know, emailing some people and making some friends, the idea that I talk a lot about this dream 100, like trying to get on people's radar and write articles for them, like you can do it. I got Ryan Holiday, who's my favorite author. I have stuff from his books, like tattooed on the inside of my forearms. Like mm -hmm. I love this author and the concepts he talks about. And like, I got him to fund a classroom set of his books for my students, just with cold outreach. Mm -hmm. um, I was on episode 49 of the Smart Passive Income podcast with Pat Flynn. Why? Cold outreach. I literally just emailed him. I was like, hey man, I'm getting killer results with what you're teaching. Can I share that with you? And he was like, yeah. So I sent it to him in an email and he's like, let's do a podcast. Right. And like now I'm the first, like a top business podcast. I'm one of the first 50 episodes in there. Like cold, there's nothing wrong with cold outreach. There's nothing wrong with trying to get guest posts. I, it took me over a year. Uh, there's this website called growth lab uh, that's run by Ramit Sethi. And like yeah. he, uh, the editor there, Sean Blanda, who now works for Envision. I don't know if you've ever used Envision. It's like a wireframing kind of tool yeah. for designers. Um, he works at Envision now, but like I got to be friends with Sean over this year. Like I had family stuff go on. He had family stuff go on and this guest post, we we're trying to edit it and do all this stuff. And it literally took over a year from like, by the time I said, Hey, can I write for you to the time it went live? But now we have this friendship, right? Now, if I just reach out to him, I was in Philadelphia recently and we were going to, it didn't work out, but like we were going to grab dinner together because like, we're just normal people. Now we have each other's phone number and stuff. Like it becomes that versus like, 
Hey man, can I get that link from your, like <laughs> there's those emails are fine. If those people have proven like they yeah. like linking to people, if you have a resources page with 500 links on it, I'm probably going to email you. Hey man, can I, can I be like, here's a bunch, here's resources. Here's five of mine and 20 of other people's, but I think they're all really good. Like, do you want them? And like, if you don't cool, so yeah, the cold outreach, the guest posting is what a lot of it ends up looking like. And then a lot of it just is like being very serendipitous about things like just reaching out to people um, when it makes sense. And when you think you have something good to share and like pitching your ideas, not being afraid to like raise your hand and take your turn. Yeah. And the other thing that is getting complex now, besides, you know, getting backlinks, et cetera, is the content structure, like content types audio, video, text, we've already touched it, but uh, someone who's getting into a content game now, is it better to have video, audio, or text? Mm-hmm. I know that's people, a great question. Because I've been into this content thing for almost 10 years, more than 10 years. I started as text and I still produce more textual content than audio video, but the audio video is certainly getting bummed up with this podcast, you know? So, mm-hmm. but there yeah, are I think, people who are coming new to into the game and they would be comfortable with video by default. Absolutely. I think you have to sit down and look at like, what do you want to do all day? Do you, and not like I want to, so there's this funny joke about like how painters love to paint and writers like to have written, <laughs> right? Like painters like the actual act of it. And then writers just want to be done with their mm-hmm. writing. Um, but what do you want to do all day? Do you want to edit words? Do you want to be a wordsmith? Do you want to edit, and this is really what it comes down to, do you want to edit audio or do you want to edit video? Because you're going to be editing if you want to do well, right? And I've learned that even though I'm really bad at editing video, I love editing video. No, your editing is cool. I've seen your recent I mean, I'm doing that stuff in iMovie. I feel like my skill set is barely scratching the surface, you know? They're almost like movie trailers. You're appearing from here, there. Yep, yep. (laughs) Trying, like, but like figuring it out, right? Like trying to get better. Um, I still, like somebody commented, they're like, this is a lame Casey Neistat ripoff. And I'm like, oh, best compliment ever. (laughs) The fact that you saw my garbage fire thing and you even thought of him like there's a there's literally a neural connection in your brain that connected those two is the best compliment ever um so yeah like should they start i mean it really depends on what you want to edit and then like what your goal is with it right like there's certain things you can't Mm -hmm. do like podcasts uh by their nature are things people listen to while they're doing something else i can't watch a video and lift weights at the same time and I can't read a blog post and uh, lift weights at the same time, but I can listen to a podcast. So if you're called action, hey, you sign up for my free five-day SEO maximizer, blah, blah, blah. At the end, like, I'm not, I'm not doing that, bro. That's not the way to get me. To, and you might get a good ROI from doing that on your podcast, but you just have to understand, like, all right, what is the move? If I'm listening to a podcast, the call to action might need to be a little bit different than a video versus mm-hmm. a text where they're already on the website. So those things become uh, something to think about, but I still think, uh, I, I don't know. I think whatever you do, uh, put some ser- like take your craft seriously, mm-hmm. take your craft of producing good audio uh, and having good interviews. Like you're a pro, like we did a bunch of stuff before we hopped on. You weren't just like, hey, Brendan, 12 o'clock, let's go. And then we flipped on and just went. Like we did prep and you're a professional and like therefore you get a better Pot, you know, a better video and a better podcast and everything out of it. And I think that when people are really dedicated to their craft, like give it time, give it six months. Like people, I had somebody the other day that's in my uh, SEO course. We have a Slack group for it. Um, it's called SEO for the rest of us. And like, they were like, well, hey, what about if I built out this other micro site and did this other thing? I'm like, you are going to have to start saying no to stuff if you want to have SEO success. But that's also true with YouTube. And it's also true with a podcast. Uh, if you want to have success, like you've got to, you've got to focus for a minute. That's not the, the whole, like, I don't have any ideas. It's such like a cute beginner problem. <laughs> that when somebody's like, I don't know what to do. What kind of business should I start? I'm like, oh my God, my biggest hurdle every day is not starting 20 new businesses. You know, it's not a lack of ideas anymore. Okay. Let's talk about your, let's uh, shift focus from SEO to your toolbox. So which are your current five favorite tools that power your business? All right, so five, 
so this is hard for me to, to narrow down. Um, I would say like my five favorite tools are probably, and I know this sounds silly, um, but I still run most of my business out of, uh, you know, Gmail and stuff and, and Google suite. Um, so the whole Google suite is one that I use. I still find it's the easiest to like share yeah. docs and do different things with, um, for writing. I loved, uh, air story, uh, which was by, uh, Joanna Weeb and the team yep. uh, at copy hackers. They're now moving that to just be like an, a research tool, which is mm -hmm. great because I love the idea of being able to take note cards. It's how I wrote when I was in school and it's how I still like to write of like, Hey, here's like, 50 ideas and now I can shuffle them around and create a really good narrative. That's really hard to do when, when, once you have 5,000 words in a Google doc. Mm -hmm. um, but with the note cards, you can do it. So the air story researcher um, SEO tool, definitely my favorite is Ahrefs. Yeah. So that powers my business, um, which is amazing because they don't even have an affiliate program because they don't really believe in it. So like anybody you hear promoting Ahrefs, it's because they love Ahrefs versus other companies who have affiliate programs. Um, and then uh, I do all my hosting with, I know it's not really a tool, but I do all my WordPress hosting through Flywheel because I love them. They're a great company. When lead pages broke my website and refused to fix it, uh, and my current host at the time, host, HostGator. <laughs> uh, sorry, I mean, I, I stuck with them as long as I could. They're fine for beginners, but they're really bad uh, if you're serious about your business. Um, and I went to Flywheel and within two seconds, they're like, oh yeah, it was the lead pages plugin. We turned it off for you. Everything's fixed. And I was like, all right, you're the best forever. Um, they made switching to their platform really easy and their support's good. And I know they're some of their marketing team. So I love that. Um, so yeah, Flywheel, Ahrefs, uh, like the G Suite. And then I, I think if I had to pick one more, I do, I, this is not like a lot of fun because like people are looking for some cool tech tool, but I, I really like Slack. Like I love relationships and being able to be in a lot of Slack groups and engage with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I made a lot of really good relationships uh, from Slack. I'm in a million different like online communities, as you know. Um, so between Facebook groups and Slack, like that's really where I spend uh, quite a bit of time. And which is your <clears throat> recommended page builder in case you use one? Um, so I mean, well, and also I would, I'd be, I, we also use Pitchbox a lot now too, um, which isn't a, not a cheap tool. It's something that you'd really need to have like multi, it's not something you would use for yourself. Um, but if you are doing uh, SEO client work and you want to scale your outreach, Pitchbox is great. Um, as far as like a page builder, I do, I really like, um, studio press themes. I'm not really good with design and I feel like uh, I've been able to create some things that allow, I've been able to create websites that allow me to punch above my weight, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. And you, look and look much better than I am. Yeah, you're using Genesis theme. I've seen your site. Like you. Yeah, I use, I use uh, yeah, Genesis and, and Studio Press Child themes on pretty much all of my websites. Um, often just the same theme because I have one that I really like. And if you see, if I, I showed you three of my websites, you'd be like, those are all the same. I don't remember the name of the theme you're using, but I know it's that out of the box look. You've not changed anything there, like the colors and all that stuff is there. Yeah, maybe just a few colors. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I was, a, I started my WordPress journey actually started with Genesis when Genesis was born. Like I've been into Genesis for almost four or five years, though now I don't use it much. Like mm -hmm. I'm more into Beaver Builder, Elementor and you know, those that space yeah. because it saves time as a developer to build sites quickly mm -hmm. and you can get more fancy easily. So the next question, which is a recommended email marketing service. Yeah, you know, um, I've, I've heard a lot of great things about ConvertKit. I'm sure it'll make sense to use them in the future, but I've always just used MailChimp. It's one of those things where the pain of switching uh, Same, yeah. is too much. Yeah, I, I tried to use ConvertKit. I bought it for a month and they're like, we'll help migrate it for free. And I was like, this is overwhelming. I don't have time. Um, you know, I've heard like uh, Drip and lead pages are simultaneously just kind of going downhill. I had bad experiences with lead pages. I've hear, heard tons of people are uh, leaving Drip uh, yeah. for ConvertKit. So, yeah, I mean, that's just, and also my, you know, Pat Flynn uh, is an advisor for ConvertKit, so I kind of trust him. Uh, there, I don't know if he's COO or CMO, Barrett Brooks over at ConvertKit is, Barrett Brooks is like on, he is low key on the same level as Seth Godin. He's one of the smartest uh, and just all the things Seth Godin is, I find those same qualities in Barrett. And I don't think enough people have heard about Barrett Brooks. 
Um, but he, yeah, I really like uh, what Nathan's built and who he's surrounded himself with. They made, they've made some mistakes, but um, I don't know. I'm like, yeah. I'm like saying I use MailChimp and then leaving a glowing review for the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think Drip seems to have seen a little exodus of users recently because mm-hmm. they, they yanked off their free plan and they increased their pricing also. So it was like a ugly shock for a lot of users. They're loyal users. And, and I think, yep. I don't think so. They grandfathered anyone. So that was also a big problem. And I think you launched a course and you're using T3. Any specific reason mm-hmm. you went with T3 and not with other popular solution? Yeah, in that's a very good question. Um, so in 2017, maybe 2016, mm-hmm. 2017, I bought uh, Jason Zook's future. He had this thing called buy my future where you could get access to all of his current products and all of the products he would ever make uh, okay. like notwithstanding. And as one of the co-creators of Teachery, I got a lifetime access to Teachery. Oh, that um, explains it. <laughs> yeah. And I also know, so I know the founder and uh, I have like help when I need help with it and which I haven't really. Um, and it just, it's an easy, I don't know, it makes sense in my brain, uh, setting it up on the back end, and I don't have to pay anything for it. So yeah, that's why I like it. And it's all, I mean, it's not bad. It's pretty clean. Um, I like the functionality of it. I haven't had now having 80 students using it. Um, for this project, I have another project, like I have a free productivity course that I've given away forever. There's a couple hundred people in that course. Like never had complaints. I've never, I've not ever had a single email of like, I can't log in. This is broken. This isn't working. None of that, which is really nice. Cool. And any upcoming tool or service that has caught your attention? I. Yeah, I've wanted to, for a while, I've wanted to move away from the Yoast plugin. Uh, I feel like it's kind of bloated. Um, I'm not a super huge fan of like some of the stuff that they've done as uh, that their old CEO, uh, Yoast is his name, Uh, but it's J-O-O-S-T. Yeah, it is um, still there. It's just the position has changed, but I guess he will still be the guiding light. Yeah, uh, his wife is now the CEO. And from everything I can tell, like she's a pretty awesome CEO. Um, mm-hmm. she, she's warranted in that position. Um, but, you know, I mean, whenever the spouse becomes the new CEO, those questions, will, you know, that would just pop up in my brain. Uh, but she's pretty good from everything I've seen. Um, and I don't know. I just want to, I don't like the dependency on it. I think it's kind of scammy that in the sitemap he links to himself twice. I think that's a really weird thing to do. Uh, if you use Yoast for your sitemaps, check your sitemaps. You will see two links, one for Yoast uh, that links to his homepage and one that says SEO and links to his SEO plugin. Um, it's unnecessary for him to put that in there. Uh, and you're like, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's free. So there's got to be some angle. Yeah, I get it. But at this point, like they don't, I don't know. They could probably take those out. So you're still um, using your store. You've switched. I, I am. I am right now. Uh, there's a new plugin called SEO Presser that I, I'm looking at. I'm in the same boat. Guess what? I bought the lifetime deal for SEO Press plugin like recently on Black Friday, mm-hmm. but I'm yet to shift from yours to SEO Press. You know that thing? Yeah. Oh, I have to do a lot of work to move it, even though it, it has a migrator and it will easily do it because mm-hmm. I don't use tons of features because the only thing I would want would be the meta title and meta description, which I normally add yep. for every post and that the the migrator plugin can handle but it's just like the mindset you know it's a lot of work to move mm-hmm. i'm also thinking because a lot of people in my you know ecosystem they i i always used yours from the very beginning and they started using seo press and said now it's the time to buy it you have a lifetime deal for i think it was 99 bucks or i don't remember how much but and so Okay, I bought it, but I'm yet to use it. But yep. what I've heard about it, it's really good plugin. Yep, I, I'm I'm in a uh, paid SEO community called Traffic Think Tank, mm-hmm. uh, which is not like a you know different than all of the SEO Facebook groups that are just full of like spam and garbage. Like these are like real. Like it was founded by uh, uh, Ian Howells, who's the head mm-hmm. of SEO at Lending Tree, Matt Barbie, who's the head of SEO at uh, HubSpot and Nick Eubanks, who's the head of like, he's an agency owner, he owns an agency called From the Future. Um, the community in there are like, there's a lot of doers. So within the SEO uh, industry, you have two sets of people. You have the talkers and the doers. And I'm a doer who does a little bit of talking. But mm-hmm. there's a lot of talkers who write about SEO and they give speeches on SEO and they do the, the circuit, right? They do a lot of conferences where they talk a lot about SEO. They give the same talk for a whole year around the whole circuit. Uh, but they never actually do SEO. They don't actually, they don't, 
they don't rank things. Yeah. Um, and get, you know what I mean? They're just pointing out, oh, look of, at this. A lot of people who do that. Right? You should really pay attention to mobile. Like they <laughs> go around talking about it, then they don't actually do it. So anyways, uh, what I love about Traffic Think Tank is it is a, uh, a lot of doers and yeah. not a lot of talkers. So um, anyways, my point was in Traffic Think Tank, it got good reviews. And I was I, like, oh, that, that, that makes it like when a bunch of smart SEOs that uh, are way above my pay grade say it's okay. I'll probably check it out. It's how I found Ahrefs is all the SEOs were talking about it. And I was like, all right. You know what? I don't label myself as an SEO expert, but I have done from content writing to website creation. I've been into SEO thing for almost 10 years. So I've seen the change and all that. Even I have a course on SEO because I know how things work because I've done it. Mm -hmm. Now, the funny part is I've seen people just like you mentioned, like I came across as a person who labels himself as an SEO expert. And I went to his website. Let me see what the what this all about and he had like simple articles and I went to his single blog post article and say guess what he he didn't have h1 tag on the whole page and person calls himself as an SEO guru and he can't even you know have the basic SEO foundation thing which is getting one h1 tag on a page and that was like cool no thank you dear (laughs) yep that happens all the time, or like being like, I'm an, I'm a web accessibility expert, and then your website's totally inaccessible. Like, <laughs> but that stuff happens. Um, okay, I just bro. think that yeah, the okay. SEO expert space is weird. Okay, Brandon. Before we wrap the episode, why don't you tell people where they can find you, and also a pitch about your SEO course? Yeah. So um, I think more than the course. So uh, I have a course uh, that's called SEO for the rest of us. Uh, it's probably not for sale. Whenever you're listening to this, watching this video, it's probably not and, for sale. At all. And I've heard good things about the course because a lot of my friends are your students. So mm-hmm. they tell me like I've been, uh, I just watched the, uh, you know, you do live session, right? And mm-hmm. once, once they get off the live session, oh, it was good. And I said, like, okay, cool, man. <laughs> Yeah, man, you should check it out. Uh, it, uh, just, like the, uh, so the course is cool. Um, and I'm really happy about it. I decided to teach the first round in live workshops because that's the best way when you're starting a course to figure out what, where people have questions and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and I just really like teaching live um, because I actually know how to teach. I don't just read slides to people. So I also know how to lesson plan. Um, so the course is cool. It's called SEO for the rest of us. If you Google SEO for the rest of us and I know what I'm doing, you should find me, right? Um, it's Cause people are like, what's your website? I'm like, I don't know, just Google me. And they're like, really? I'm like, if I'm good at my job, you'll find me. There's, there's no other Brendan Hufford's out there. I also have the benefit of a very unique name. Um, so what I would love for people to check out though, uh, which probably, you know, will be, they will exist in the world by the time they see this uh, is a hundred days of SEO. Um, and checking out, you know, I just want to give people as much free education as possible. There's a cool little five day challenge. That'll be a part of that. Um, that you should, if you want to in five days and you're seriously like, Hey, I can take action Monday through Friday on this for 30 minutes a day. Um, they should definitely check out. It's a good way to audit evaluate and kind of give you next steps. It's not like a prescriptive five day, like check your title tag. No, no, no. It's like, Hey, how do I actually figure out where my opportunities are and what can I do? Mm -hmm. Um, and and gives you at the end of the five days, your action steps. Uh, I think that'll be super valuable. They can check that it's a hundred days of SEO.com. Uh, or like I said, just Google it. Um, but I think that'll be the most benefit for people, especially people who are learning about website creation and trying to make better websites and stuff like that's the best introduction. Um, the course is great, but it's just not always going to be open. We'll do a couple launches a year, but if you want to get that or you want to get uh, my SEO newsletter, um, you could literally just just Google Brendan Hufford and go to my website. The which newsletter is, is the first. Which is amazing. I, I get it. So yeah. appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, well, because you see, you know what you forget, and this is one of those silly things we talked about relationships so much today you see that like, oh, this is my open rate and this is how many people are on my email list. But those are all people. Yeah. Those are all real humans that really exist and have lives and families and people that love them and stuff like, anyway, and they give you a little bit of their time to read your email. So you better make it good. And they um, reply you back. I get replies to my newsletters and it feels so good. It's like a bliss, you know, oh, someone not yeah. just is reading, but also replying to what I'm saying. That's amazing. Love it. Absolutely love it. So yeah, if you check out, just go to brendanhuffer.com, check out the uh, SEO for the rest of us newsletter. 
that's it. Um, the course is great, but I would rather people uh, check out me and see if, you know, even if you've listened to or watched this whole uh, interview, you know, really decide if the way I feel about SEO and what I think about it is right for you. Probably best to start with 100 days of SEO or the newsletter. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Have a good day. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks.